Hi, welcome to Town Valley Motorhomes. This is a handover of an Auto Trail V line 610. As we start the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, you've got your two fridge vents here, and then directly next to it, you have your cassette locker. So, to open your cassette locker, you'll need to use your habitation key. Unlock this side, and then you'll be able to push both the catches in and release the door. And then to get the cassette out, you want to ensure that the blade's closed on the bowl of the toilet inside. But I'll show you that when I get into the inside bit. And then all you need to do is lift the orange handle, slide the cassette out, you can either carry it, or you can pull the handle out and you can drag it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. And then to empty, all you need to do is Remove the cap, press the orange button when emptying the cassette, empty the cassette and then once you've emptied it there's normally a tap so now you put a little bit of water in, give it a rinse tip out again and then fill this with a cap full of liquid so that can either be the blue liquid or the green and it goes directly into the cassette and then it's good to go back into the motor hole. Next week you have a green, or should I say a blue and a grey tap. Blue is fresh water drain, so if you've taken on any contaminated water, you're not using the van for the winter where you want to winterise it and drain it all down, or you're just not using it for a couple of weeks, you would let the water out the blue one. And then the grey one is all your dirty water, so hand basin, shower water and dishes water. You want to ensure that's drained off before you leave your site so that you're not driving around with excess weight that you don't need because it will impact your payload and your fuel consumption. And also make sure that's fully drained off in the winter. True my vent, so this is a vent when, so it'll allow the fumes out. We're not rating on gas, obviously it does work on electric as well. But on gas your fumes will come out here, so just make sure that it's obstruction free and that gives you the location of your boiler so it's under your back lounge. Here you have an external shower point, so it's a cold water feed shower only. You'll get a hose pipe end like this, and then on the other end of the pipe will be a trigger gun. Connects into here, you can hose yourselves off, the dogs, the bikes, the boots. Make sure the pump's on to get a pressurised flow of water through here. This is your hookup point. So this is where you connect the vehicle with 230 volt if you were hooked up on a site or charging at home. I'll hook the vehicle up now and I'll show you how to do it. Get your hooker blades, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van and slide the coupling on. Hook the van up first, then the power source and do it in reverse order when unhooking along with pressing the blue clip in the left hand corner to release the pins in the hooker blade. The back of the van you have your high level brake light and your bullet style reversing camera. Lift the tailgate up and you have foot for the leg for your outdoor table if you want that outside you can put your bits and pieces on there this one's got a two cup lead in here but you can put whatever you want in here as storage as the straps there is your shower this one's got a submersible pump this one's also got some leveling ramps so don't come with these these have been left in by the previous owner and you've got your own and winding handle you've also got your external gas barbecue point at the back so what you'll need is you'll need some gas hosing which is the orange rubber type a quick release connector and two jubilee clips and you'll be able to pop it in there turn the gas tap on and it'll use the gas on board the vehicle instead of carrying a separate bottle to power your kadak or external barbecue On this side of the van you do have your awning, so you've got your awning there with your awning light which we can show you on collection. 
LPG, so this model is fitted with a 25 litre underslung tank. Which means that you don't need to use a bottle. So you go to your LPG centre, you get the connector, pop it in the van there to be in it fitting. Turn the connector, press and hold the button on the filler and fill with LPG until simply it doesn't take any more. Something like this from empty will take about 25 quid. Next to it you have your fresh water filler point. So this is lockable again with the habitation key. And all you need to do is grab yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. Connect the end of the tap, pop the flat end of the hose in the van and wait until it overflows or you can look on your control panel and see how much water is on board at any one time. Should you struggle, you have got a filling point via a pump so you can bring a barrel of water or a bucket of water to the van, pop your 12 volt point in there, pop one end in here, pump into the water and it'll suck it into the main tank. Step, so that will retract on the engine going starting. Make sure the engine's switched off before you pop it back out because it simply won't work. Diesel, which opens with the main Fiat Decato key to fill with diesel. Tire pressures, which are five and a half bar, which is 79.5 PSI. You've got a tool kit underneath the passenger seat, which includes a jack and a brace and a tow eye. And releasing this panel in the floor, you've got your engine battery. So what you can do here is in the winter to avoid a flat battery, you can put a charger on, or if you ever need to replenish the battery, lift this cover out and you can lift the battery out of the floor. Bonnet releases on the side of the dashboard. And then underneath the bonnet, to the left hand side you've got all your fluids so this one's your screen wash this one here three cut three little tabs releases this and you can fill your power steering and your coolant brake fluid oil filler and dipstick paint code and paint num code number and color earth here for giving or receiving a jump start so you'd earth off there as the battery's underneath the carb floor and then between the air filter and the fuse box is this triangular cover. Lift that up and you've got your positive terminal for giving or receiving a jump start. Gross vehicle weight, underneath that you've got your train weight and then you've got your front and back axle weights. To operate your control panel, so you've got your master switch here which turns the vehicle on of 12 volt. Or if you are hooked up you will get 230 volt, so turn the vehicle on. And if you press battery L, which is your leisure battery, you can view the reading of the battery. So you can see there it's fully charged. Take the hook about to get a true reading of your battery. You can do the same with a vehicle battery. See how full that is. But the habitation is now using the vehicle battery because of blue lights on. You don't want that because it would flatten the van battery. So turn it back to battery L, which is your leisure battery. And it will use the designated battery, which, is which it is designed for to operate the habitation area. Pump, so making sure you've got enough water, you can turn your pump on and you get a pressurized flow to your taps toilet shower. And then here you can view your fresh water level reading. So you've got three gas burners on your hob. Once you've had them on, if you do just allow them to cool down before you put the glass lid down so that they're cool enough to touch otherwise you can sometimes shatter the glass lid if it is too hot and then underneath you've got an oven and above the oven you've got your grill you may want to take your oven shelf and grill pan out when you, when traveling as it can cause a little bit of vibration when on the road 
underneath <laughs> the oven you've got storage but you do have your gas isolation valves so should you have any problems with gas you can isolate each individual appliance from here but you have a main shut off underneath the van on the tank as well your microwave is an 800 watt mains microwave so you've got to be hooked up for that to work and then all you need to do is press eco wake the microwave up and then you can press and it'll go up in 30 second increments above the tv in the back lounge you've got your tv booster so it's a fixed aerial but what you can do is you can min and max the signal here should you be getting a pixelized picture at max try turning it down because it may just be too strong that it's interfering with the signal but try here if you're struggling for a tv signal solar panel controller so you've got a switch here and you can adjust where the charge is going to so it's going to the front battery there or it's going to the leisure battery there it's off in the middle so you can adjust where you want the charge to go to when the vehicle's either standing or whether you're using the motorhome and you want to charge your leisure battery that's your switch that you would choose where the charge is getting diverted to so in the washroom you've got your shower curtain there that's rolled up your shower head on the hose in the winter if you unscrew your shower head from the hose just so that no water coils up in here and potentially freezes leaving the mixer tap open press here you've got a drop down sink don't overfill the sink because when you tip it up it drains into the canal underneath and sometimes if you put a large amount of water in it's going to flood over the top and hit the toilet so just slowly drain your waste from your sink off like so behind the mirrors if you just push them you do have storage shelves for your toiletries and then to operate your toilet what you need to do is make sure the pump's on and press the blue button at the back the blue button is your flush so if i press the blue button there the fan will kick in it's flashing which means it's extracting make it go solid and it's off and then press the button and you'll be able to flush the toilet you always want to put a bit of flush in the toilet before use because it helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the cassette and then what you want to do is you want to open the blade so to open the blade it's this grey handle here you'd slide that to your right towards you and as you can see there it's opened the hatch between the cassette and the toilet which means you can now use the toilet once you've finished using the toilet give it a good flush if you've bought the pink and the blue in a twin pack, pack of chemical, dilute the pink in some in a spray bottle with some water. Spray the bowl, it'll clean the bowl and it'll give a fragrant smell in the washroom. And then once you've flushed it, you want to close the blade. So you want to slide this back to the left, close it. And then when you get three green lights underneath here, the diagram of the cassette, it means that the cassette is full and it's now time to empty the cassette but make sure the blades close because if the blades open you'll not get the cassette out the side of the motorhome to operate your fridge which is a dometic fridge you've got your on off button here so you can turn the fridge on and off and then you have three sources so you have mains hook up on 230 volts so it'll act as a household fridge if you are hooked up on a site or you are pre-chilling your fridge a few days before you go away obviously if you're lucky enough to keep this at home you can hook it up not only does that allow the leisure battery to charge but it also means you can put your fridge on and chill your fridge with nothing in it for a day or two and then be the night before you'll want to put your shopping in allow that to chill on mains and then you can put on the battery which is this one here 12 volt battery and when you're traveling as long as the engine started it'll send a 12 volt feed to your fridge so it'll keep it nice and fresh until you go back to mains power or you can select gas 
which you'd use gas if you're wild camping. Here you have your temperature. So five bars being the coldest, put it on all five bars when pre-chilling. Once you put your shopping in, just drop it down to three or four maximum. And then finally with the fridge, what you want to do is when you're not using it, on the light here, you've got this little tab which pulls out these two pins. And it means that the door doesn't shut fully on itself, which means that you will allow an air circulation in and out the fridge, which will stop smells from forming in the fridge and making your motorhome stink. So if you remove your cushions on your driver's side rear lounge, in here you have your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water at any one time. So in the winter, it's very important when you're not using the vehicle that you drain it down of all water. So you'd open your fresh and your waste outside. You'd open all your taps within the vehicle just to allow any water that's sitting in any pipelines to drain off via the waste, which will be open from outside as well. So it'll drain straight out on the floor underneath the vehicle. And then you want to drain off your boiler. So to do this, down the side here, You've got this little yellow toggle and all you've got to do is you've got to lift that up and stand it on end like so leave it stood up on end and it will stop the water from sitting in the boiler so it'll drain off the 10 liters directly out underneath the vehicle you would leave that stood up during the time you've not got the vehicle in use so when we're experiencing colder temperatures, make sure it's just drained down when not in use. Regardless if you're using it in a couple of days time, drain it off because water can freeze in colder temperatures. Once you have drained it off, like I've said, make sure all your taps are open just to stop any water from sitting in any pipelines within the vehicle. And then when you come to reuse it, you'd obviously shut the tap so it's sitting down like so. Shut the fresh and the waste outside, shut all the taps inside the motorhome and then go and fill the vehicle with water. Fill the vehicle with cold water outside via a hose pipe. Come in, put your control panel on and put your pump on. Go to the cold side of the tap first to get a pressurised flow of cold water straight away. As soon as you start going to the hot side, it's then when you'll get coughing and spluttering through the tap because it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank underneath the van into the boiler. So it's filling this with 10 litres until you get a free flow of water from the hot side. This is when you know that your system is then primed. But make sure you drain your boiler off in the winter, otherwise it's a costly mistake and it's not covered under any warranty as it's your responsibility to drain the vehicle off. In the front here, you've got your consumer unit. So your EC155 power supply unit. So you've got all your fuses on the 12 volt, which are listed here, what fuses does what. So do carry some spare fuses. Just in case the fuse does blow, you can replenish the fuse. And you've got your trips on mains electric this side. Each auto trail has a unique build number. So if you ever need parts for the motorhome, quote that number to any auto trail dealer. They'll be able to pop it into the auto trail parts system online and get the correct part for you and then you do have your fuse spur for your electric side of your water obviously that is controlled via your truma cp digital control panel above the door but this needs to be on for the fuse spur to allow the water to be heated on electric via your boiler so just leave it as it is, but just make sure you haven't knocked it if you are experiencing any problems with heating your water on electric. So to make your back lounge into a bed, what you've got to do is if you lift and slide, and then put your back rests. in the middle and you need to rearrange your cushions so lie them down like so this one and 
and there you have your double bed across the width of the motorhome. You can remove this back section as well, which will give you a wider bed, so more like your king size bed if you remove them. But that's all you need to do. So slide them out, backrest in the middle. Just a top tip, don't open this window when you've got your sliding door closed. Because you can't open it when it's open anyway. But that sliding door will come back if this window's open and rip it off the channel and smash your window. So don't I wouldn't advise opening this window at all in case you forget that the window's open and you open the van and the wind catches the door and before you know it, you've got to replace the window. Top of it, you have text telly. Use a remote, point it down at the bottom there. When it goes to blue, it's on and it'll start up. And then to retune your telly every time you move locations, AQT, press and hold. And then just press OK and it'll do an auto search and it'll find as many channels as it can where you're parked up. So if you start your engine, and this is your gas level indicator, so this will tell you how much gas is in your 25 litre gas tank. So at the moment, on this one we've got half a tank of gas, because you can see the green dot stop here. When it's full it will go right the way down, down to high, and when it's low it will show red on low, which means it's now time to find your local LPG centre and fill your gas tank back up. On this motorhome, which has been fitted additionally, as it doesn't normally come with one of these monitors, it's normally all through the head unit. You've got your rear view camera, which is a permanent rear view. So when in neutral and when in any forward gear, you can see out the back of the motorhome, so you can see the back of the motorhome, as well as when you lift and select reverse, you see the same vision. And obviously this is the rear bump of the motorhome. So this can help when parking the vehicle up. In the washroom, Top of your toilet, make sure that your pump's on on your main control panel. And then you'll be able to press the blue button here, which is your flush. So always flush the toilet first to put a little bit of water in the bottom of the bowl, which keeps the seal between the top of the toilet and the top of the cassette lubricated. Stops it going brittle. And then before you use the toilet, you want to open the blade. And to open the blade, there's a grey handle here. And all you need to do is slide it away from you. So to your right, slide the... Now we can use the toilet. Everything's going to go into the cassette. Then once you've finished with it, give it a good flush by again pressing that blue button. If you've bought the blue and the pink in a twin pack as the chemicals, obviously this van doesn't take the pink, but what you can do is you can dilute it with some water, spray the bowl, flush, and it'll do the same thing 